The African Union has been around in some form or another for over 50 years. Its goal has always been to foster unity and peace among African nations. But as its leaders gather in Ethiopia once again, how effective is the AU? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Adrian Finnegan. It began with a wave of optimism about Africa's future. In 1963, a group of independent African nations created the Organization of African Unity, which later became the African Union. Its promise was to bring Africans together and propel the continent towards peaceful coexistence and growth. The organization now says that peace and security have become more worrying than ever, and it's working to address the issue. But the focus of this year's meeting is Africa's young people and their future. Heads of state from the continent are meeting in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, for a summit that's focusing on youth investment. But conflicts in South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the Central African Republic are dominating the agenda. Millions continue to flee from violence and natural disasters right across the continent. Poverty, the outbreak of disease and food shortages are all big issues. Well, the African Union is made up of all 54 countries on the continent. Morocco rejoined the organization earlier this year after a 33-year absence. The AU says it wants to reduce conflict and eradicate poverty. It has a special council that can deploy military force and authorize peacekeeping missions. The organization promotes what it calls good governance. It regularly suspends member states over coups and then readmits them when they return to constitutional rule. In 2015, South Africa was criticized for not arresting Sudan's President Omar al-Bashir when he attended an AU meeting. Bashir is wanted by the International Criminal Court for war crimes. So let's bring in our guests for today. Joining us from Addis Ababa, where the summit is taking place, Solomon Derso, founder, director of Amani Africa Media Research uh, Services. That's a policy research and consulting think tank. Uh, from Johannesburg, we're joined by David Monnier, co-director of Confucius Institute at the University of Johannesburg. And from Abuja, Michael Meri, a researcher of history and war studies at the Nigerian Defense Academy. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. Um, Solomon, if we can start with you, is the African Union a club worth belonging to in the 21st century? What are its strengths and its weaknesses? Thank you very much for having me. Well, the African Union is indeed the kind of organization that uh, Africa needs to have, and if it didn't exist, exist, it's something that it needed to create. Uh, we live in a world where individual states by themselves alone couldn't really weigh that much and therefore the only way forward in terms of uh, pulling themselves together and achieving what they seek to achieve in terms of economic development, uh, political uh, and democratic uh, development is to pull themselves together and have a common agenda which they commonly pursue and therefore uh, it is indeed an institution that you need to have in this time and age more so than in any other time before. Uh, in terms of its weaknesses and strength, I think uh, in terms of its strength, we all know that uh, given that it is a membership organization of 55 member states, uh, it is the largest regional blocking and therefore if it speaks with, with one voice, uh, its voice weighs uh, strongly in the uh, various uh, global platforms and this has been witnessed with respect to some of the processes that we have seen such as for example climate change negotiations but also in the election process of some of the global institutions the, such as the World Health Organization uh, whose director was recently elected uh, former foreign minister of Ethiopia Tedros Adhano uh, so that is one of the major uh, strengths and it also provides for the countries of the region a platform for coming, debating and okay. uh, articulating solutions to the plethora of issues facing the continent in the realm of peace and security, okay. uh, economic integration, infrastructural development 
and other areas. All right, David, do you agree with, with what you've heard uh, there? Is the African Union an effective solver of Africa's problems? Is it possible to get all of the member states together uh, on, on, to agree on one common agenda? Um, I think when you look at the history of the uh, African Union, it has been very good in terms of dealing with uh, challenges uh, on paper. I think they have uh, agreed from uh, Abuja Accord and uh, they've dealt with quite a number of issues uh, in which they spoke with one voice. I think the greatest challenge is the implementation. And as you are aware, the 55 country members, states are some of the poorest countries in the world, uh, plugged into a number of challenges, conflict, underdevelopment, the health issues, and therefore the bulk of global uh, problems uh, seem to be uh, mainly on the African continent. And therefore when you have an institution such as the AU, it doesn't matter how uh, big, how well oiled it is, uh, it seems it lacks in terms of the lack of resources to mobilize and react uh, speedily on issues. Um, the lack of administrative in terms of research uh, and deal with other uh, issues that uh, concern the continent. Uh, at the same level as the European Union, it is a huge, uh, at Brussels, secretariat. And then the AU doesn't have a similar a, a huge bureaucracy that can manage and coordinate policies uh, agreed upon at AU level and ensure that uh, it simmers through into sovereign states. So in most instances, you see the agreements at the A level, but at nation state level, uh, sovereign states sign other agreements with other powers, uh, at times in contradiction with what, with what they have agreed uh, okay. as a group. So you have, it's, it's an institution that is still finding its feet. It's doing well in other areas, in other areas, most areas. It's still behind uh, in terms of time and due to lack of resources. Okay, let's bring in Michael Mary then in, in, in Abuja. We, we, we touched on some of the negatives there. I don't want to dwell too much on, on those negatives, but, but let's look at, at how the AU has been positive for Africa. It has been able to, to mediate and bring peace in some. I mean, not all of the conflicts. There are several raging still right now, but it has been able to, to mediate and, and bring peace in, in some of the, region, the continent's conflicts, hasn't it, Mike? Well, uh, thank you so much. Um, African Union as an organization has uh, been involved considerably at finding solutions to some intractable security and stability problems in Africa. It has played a significant role in Liberia, in Sudan, and so forth and so on, although all of these come with a lot of questions. And uh, some of these questions are, you know, to the extent of capability and capacity of deploying not just strategy, but uh, a one-voiced African position to ensuring that we have, uh, you know, a template, a near template to solving some of our regional security challenges. For, uh, you see, um, we are aware in Africa that our problems, or we know our problems in Africa, food security, conflicts, and issues of democracy. So we expect an African Union to go beyond just solving crises uh, uh, you know, after uh, the outbreaks of such conflicts. Let us begin to look at individual issues that uh, necessitate or create the ground for such conflicts. For instance, what are we doing as African Union to ensure that uh, our agriculture has received direction and uh, is taking its prime place to provide and solve some of the problems that bleed or uh, fester the growth of conflict. How about transport transportation? Today, journeys within Africa, even in West Africa, is just uh, cumbersome. So even when you have the food, when you have the resources to solve some of the regional problems in Africa, you are not able to reach uh, uh, you know, such destinations with ease. And these uh, help to sustain conflicts. And so I hope that, and I really look towards an African Union, good as it were, as an institution, because that is what the, the global demand, um, you know, uh, requires. But we should not just be copycat institutions. 
and be relying on certain decisions to influence our own conduct and approach to the local issues in Africa. All right. Uh, let's take a look at some of the issues then facing the, the African Union. Conflicts in South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Central African Republic and Burundi are high on the agenda at this meeting. Armed groups, including Boko Haram, ISIL and Al-Shabaab, also pose a threat to millions of Africans. Tens of thousands of people live in camps across the continent with harsh conditions. A cholera outbreak in South Sudan could kill thousands. The country is already struggling with food shortages. And with uh, so few options, thousands of people are fleeing to Europe on boats that are often in intercepted by the Italian Coast Guard. Some of those uh, people don't survive that journey. Uh, it's not just conflict that's forcing people out, but natural disasters too. African heads of states are trying to address a severe drought across the Horn of Africa. A staggering 17 million people are critically short of food across eight countries. And while the African Union promotes democracy, a number of leaders, of course, have held power uh, for decades. Um, Solomon, as, as we, we've touched on the, on the positives then of the African Union, why is the continent still beset by, by poverty, by conflict, by corruption? Why is the, un uh, the AU unable to, to solve all of Africa's problems? I think it's important to understand that there are institutional, structural uh, and, and efficiency issues that uh, affect the African Union. Uh, it's also important to remember that the African Union, as an organization of uh, its constituent units that are the member states, uh, it would reflect the strength that the member states have and therefore uh, the weaknesses that bedevil the member states get reflected uh, within the framework of the African Union as well. And it is in that context that we are witnessing some of the major issues affecting the proper functioning of the Union and therefore its, effective, its effective effectiveness in addressing many of the issues that you highlighted. I think uh, in terms of, uh, at the moment, as you may be aware, uh, there, there is an agenda for the reform of the African Union. And this agenda for the reform of the African Union clearly articulates that the union can't continue the way it has continued, that there is a need for the transformation of the African Union. Okay. And this requires actually a restructuring of the, uh, the AU and focusing its activities on priority areas such as peace and security, uh, political governance, economic integration and speaking with one voice. These are the areas that they have identified. But unless and otherwise member states fully uh, contribute dues that are necessary for the proper functioning of the Union unless they implement the decisions that are taken he here in Addis at the level of the Heads of State Summit during the course of the AU Summit, there is nothing that's going to happen. So there is a huge gap between decisions that are taken and their rhetoric and what actually happens on the ground at the national level. Okay. I think until say time that the bridge between the rhetoric and the decisions and what actually happens on the ground is bridged, we are not going to move that far in terms of resolving those issues. Okay, I, I want to get David's opinion on that. Do you agree with, with, with what you heard there, David? What, what needs to happen to make the AU a uh, more effective, more powerful grouping? What, what reforms do you think it needs to, to implement? I think core to the issue is stability at a global level. Let's us, uh, face some of the realities. Uh, for instance, uh, the uh, attack and destruction of Libya, for instance, by the most powerful countries in the world, the United States, uh, led by Britain and France, uh, killing Muammar Gaddafi, stabilized North Africa, and it had huge ripple effect up to uh, West Africa. So uh, in international players and key countries have been playing a destructive role on the African continent. Um, number two, uh, it also has to deal with issues of trade uh, at a global level. It appears to um, the lack of fair trade, uh, and this has a huge impact. Um, and coupled with uh, weaknesses within African countries themselves, for instance, the African countries trade among themselves with a percentage of 12%. Uh, so there's less trade 
among African countries. I think what is needed is agreed at the AU level, the Agenda 2063 speaks to the need of integration through infrastructure development and industrialization. So those factors, if it is pursued in a coordinated uh, fashion with other players, whether the Chinese uh, playing a key role in, us, in East Africa uh, with the recent uh, successes uh, with the rail uh, in, in Kenya, speaking to Uganda, Rwanda, and Southern Sudan, if that can be achieved to increase more trade among African countries and ensure fair trade with China, um, similarly with the European Union, as well as the United States. As we speak, we have a huge problem. Uh, Uganda, Rwanda are facing problem uh, in which they want to limit uh, buying uh, uh, used clothes, uh, cheap, uh, dumping into their markets from the United States. And the United States uh, is of the view that if they fail to buy secondhand clothes, they are going to deal away with the GOA, the major trade agreement uh, between Africa and the United States. So there, there's a, a unfair, unequal um, um, uh, development and the manner in which powerful countries are dealing with the continent. It's one thing. And therefore, uh, dealing with all these things requires leadership that goes far beyond head of states. There is a need to beef up some of the institutions, for instance, the legal uh, institution, uh, to try some of the war criminals on the continent, uh, ensure that they don't depend on the ICC alone, as well as to ensure that the African parliament is uh, strengthened, it's uh, empowered, um, and people feel and participate in the AU uh, and not make it a only a head of state's club. Okay. Uh, so these are some uh, of the challenges and a clear solution that could assist the continent right, to move forward and deal with the uh, never-ending challenge that it confronts. Mike Kameri in, in Abuja, what do, you, what do you make of what you, you heard uh, just there? Uh, as I mean, nobody's quite sure what American policy towards Africa is. Uh, right now, it, it, it still hasn't settled. As allegiances shift, as, as politics become, becomes more unpredictable in, in the rest of the world, what are the dangers, do you feel, for, for the AU? Well, uh, international politics has always influenced the direction of African national stability and African diplomacy. And it is also reflective in the, uh, in the, in the, in the outcome at the African Union uh, level. Where, <clears throat> for instance, today we have uh, somebody mentioned uh, in this discussion the, the, the incidents in Libya and uh, perhaps in Iraq as uh, a result of the actions of the U.S. and uh, its allies. It had direct effect in Africa. So we are managing crises that we never, you know, thought of as an, a union. You know, crises that we never planned for, we didn't envisage, is caused by external forces create. Uh, circumstances, uh, troubling circumstances for Africa locally. And apart from that, uh, most of the countries in Africa find themselves being supported by individual uh, countries of the West. China has come in. The African Union itself owes its secretariat in Addis Ababa to a $200 million gift from, from China. So it creates a kind of confusion even at the table. So when the African heads of states come to sit down, they sit down to present their own individual perspectives to, 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 to issues, but they are not even carrying the countries along. In fact, the issues of African Union in most of the countries, the one I know, Nigeria, is mostly an academic, uh, something for academic discourse. Most of the people are yet to understand the direction of the African Union. You can hardly see any visible intervention only when they talk of uh, taking troops to a peacekeeping mission and then the summit comes, we know that our, our heads of states are junketing to a part of uh, a corner of Africa to go and discuss and uh, present agendas that have no direct relevance with the yearnings or needs of the, of, the, of the population. As an institution, the EU, I mean the AU is important. But we must begin to build institutional capacities locally down the line yeah. to ensure that the agenda is based on African okay. experience rather than right. any other motivation. Mike, Mike, we're rapidly running out of time. There, you raised two issues there that I want to put to um, uh, uh, Solomon and, and to, to David. Solomon, um, does the fact that, that the AU is still largely funded by outside institutions, the EU, for example, 
uh, hamper its abilities? Is that holding it back? Without a doubt. Uh, it has been a while since uh, this uh, issue of uh, external dependency uh, has been recognized here within the framework of the African Union. And indeed, uh, interestingly enough, it is the issue of financing of the African Union that triggered the agenda for the reform of the institution itself. Uh, as you rightly pointed out, uh, on some of the agenda items, for example, on peace and security, uh, close to 98% of the funding comes from external sources. And this obviously has serious repercussions in terms of uh, the AU not being able to predict and therefore to, get, to get on time uh, some of these resources uh, and also the question of the AU being in effective control of the agenda items uh, around which uh, it can get finances uh, from external resources. And therefore we have seen, for example, uh, recently uh, the cutting of 20% of the budget uh, towards emission by the European Union. Uh, which, uh, w which has affected the functioning of Amazon. There are still questions on where to resource the balance uh, of that 20% uh, percent cut from the European Union. And it is in this context that a proposal has been floated uh, by uh, Dr. Kaberka, former president of the African Development Bank, for the AU member states to use a 0.2 import levy on what they call eligible products that are imported from outside of the continent and use the money that is collected from that resource for funding the union as well as its peace and security activities. Now the question really is whether or not African states would really uh, come to the table and uh, act uh, and walk the talk as far as the implementation of this decision is concerned. Okay. Uh, there are still a lot of issues uh, that we have heard from various member states and uh, we are not yet there in terms of uh, acting on this decision. Okay. Uh, uh, David, I want to get your thoughts very briefly on, on that, on, the, on this funding issue and whether you think the rest of the world, uh, as ha has been argued, takes Africa much more seriously because of, of the AU. Uh, indeed, I think uh, Africa is not asking the world for favors. Um, Africa is part of the international community and within the United Nations, I think there is a need to ensure that the UN responds in coordination with the AU. Uh, but more importantly, at the end of the day, it will be the Africans keeping their own peace. So what is required are some of the regional powers, such as Nigeria, South Africa in Southern Africa, Kenya in, in, in East Africa, Algeria, Morocco now, um, and other uh, countries with uh, uh, better resources to ensure that they coordinate and do more. And uh, also the issue of uh, leaders, uh, to what extent uh, leaders uh, agreeing on key issues. Do they their own bilateral relationship? For instance, South Africa and Nigeria, I mean, it appears as if their relationship is non-existent. You have Buhari who is sick uh, and in South Africa is bogged in its own domestic issues. There is a need for some of the leading African countries to step up into the plate and play a key role and ensure that the AU is capacitated in terms of bureaucracy with well um, um, uh, people who know what they are researching on and ensure that institutions of higher learning in all African countries, particularly the youth, uh, contribute in terms of um, Africa's uh, own uh, peace uh, and security, stop the migration of African uh, people, uh, and especially the youth who are dying in the Mediterranean Sea, at uh, issues of health, um, and ensure that infrastructure, it is indeed uh, built in line with the Agenda 2063. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, uh, there we're going to have to leave our discussion. Many thanks indeed uh, to all of you. Uh, Solomon Derso, David Monnier, and uh, Mike O'Meary. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget you can see the program again uh, anytime. Just go to the website aljazeera.com. Uh, and you'll find it there. For further discussion, join us at our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation 
on Twitter, our handle at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the whole team here in Doha. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye for now.